In the world of business, success goes to companies that lead revolutions. New ways of doing business that turn conventional wisdom on its head. To identify these companies, DP Information Group has listed some of Singapore's top performers, the Singapore 1000 family of rankings. Now we go inside these companies and unveil their closely guarded secrets to success. These are their velocities of growth. Every day in Asia, individual users are checking their emails, downloading applications, chatting with friends on the internet, downloading music and movies, connecting on social media. Every day in Asia, companies are managing their logistics, trading shares, buying and selling goods and services, communicating with clients and offices all over the world, managing content. Every day, Asia's people and Asia's companies are doing more and more on the internet. And they want to do it lightning fast on demand in real time. Asia's internet growth is outpacing all other regions worldwide and demand continues to grow. With the region's internet traffic growing by leaps and bounds, consumers and companies alike need fast, secure, reliable electronic expressways to carry their content and applications. Asia depends heavily on submarine networks. Every second, trillions of bytes of data zip through whisper-thin cables lying on the seabed, crisscrossing the region and the globe. William Barney heads the company that owns most of the cable that carries your data and applications. This is a, uh, a, a submarine cable. Um, and these little guys up here, each one of these actually carries uh, one of these would carry roughly 20 times all of Asia's internet traffic five years ago. Could be carried on just one of these little strands, just to give you some perspective on, on how amazing each one of these strands are. If you look at it, they're cased in plastic, there's a, uh, a copper sheathing. Most of what the, the cable actually does is transfer power. So the cables, although the internet and all of the, the communications goes in these little lines, the most important thing here is electricity that actually flows through it so that they can actually keep the signal going from one end of the ocean to the other. Packnet is Asia's fastest growing independent telecommunications service provider. Listed among the Singapore 1000 by ranking body DP Information Group, it owns and operates the Asia Pacific region's most extensive submarine cable network. The system connects the fastest growing half of the global economy with more than 46,000 kilometers of resilient and redundantly provisioned optical fiber linking hundreds of cities globally. That undersea network is maintained by ships like these, sometimes sending these remote controlled robots down to the seabed to help detect problems that could cause disruptions to internet services. Owning your own system allows you to essentially restore your customers on multiple routes. So in any given country, we may have four, six, or even eight landings in that country uh, with cables. So it allows us to back customers up in the case there's a breakage. The other thing is this boat that I'm sitting on, we actually have uh, two of these dedicated to us in, in Asia that actually just fix our cable. And if you're with a consortia cable, you'd have to go out and actually uh, uh, share one of these ships with many other cables. So we actually have dedicated maintenance vessels and also control of a very, very large network. One of the keys to the company's success is vertical integration. PacNet was formed in 2008 from the merger of two companies. The first, Asia Netcom, was a subsea cable operator. The second, Pacific Internet, was the largest privately owned internet communication service provider in the Asia-Pacific region. Today, aside from owning and operating much of the submarine cable that links Asia to the rest of the world, it's also a one-stop provider of bandwidth, managed services, hosting and IT solutions. Its key market segments include telecommunication service providers, large multinational enterprises and small to medium enterprises. The financial industry is a key sector. We have two fundamental requirements. One is speed. Ideally, we want the WAN to be as fast as the LAN. 
We know that's possible, but the most we can narrow the gap, the closer we can make the performance between the two, the better yet. Second, obviously, is reliability. In the trading environment, we really need 100% reliability. Talk about 99.99%, .99%, that's fine, and that certainly means you're up. But if we're down at all, we certainly hear it, and we have a major impact on the market. In the midst of growth and demand, owning subsea cables does have its challenges. Well, I think the challenges are that it's a, uh, um, we're in so many diverse geographies. Uh, we, we deal with earthquakes in Japan and Taiwan. We have shipping challenges in, in Singapore. Um, so there is, it is a very, very broad network. Um, thankfully, it's so large that uh, our customers never have to see those challenges that we have. But as an operating team, we, we are uh, challenged with dealing with issues in, in all these different geographies. Over the last several years, PacNet has come to the forefront of the Asia-Pacific telecom space with industry-leading year-over-year growth. Headquartered in Singapore and Hong Kong, PacNet also has offices in 14 countries throughout the region, in addition to offices in the United States and Europe. After the break, how PacNet aims to feed the region's growing hunger for high-speed internet connectivity and mission-critical data hosting services. Digital content is experiencing unprecedented growth in Asia. The massive surge in demand for online video and increasingly complex internet applications means data has to be delivered faster than ever. One way to do this is to locate data close to consumers, putting copies on multiple servers. PacNet's control of the region's submarine cable network has given it a unique opportunity to tap into this demand. For one, it's converting its wholly owned cable landing facilities where the submarine cable comes on shore into data landing stations. These advanced data center facilities house business critical equipment, applications and data for its customers. Customers can access data from these nearby landing stations instead of far off servers. PacNet has already launched two data landing stations in Hong Kong and Singapore with more on the way. These days, when you take a look at the applications, the customers are not only looking for a co-location space or bandwidth, they're looking for two things at the same time. And the DLS, basically data landing stations, are putting two together under one roof. And if you understand our cable landing station, it was built back in 2000 uh, with resilience and robustness that no one else can compare to it. And now, coupled with the capacity that we have within the station, it is pretty much the best that the customer can ask for on the DLS in co-locating with us and you know, providing from, you know, to, to them the capacity that, that they need. And with consumers and companies constantly demanding speed and security, it makes perfect sense to locate these data landing stations at PacNet's cable landing facilities. Now, if you take a look at the application side, I'm seeing a lot more videos coming our way. It's already here today, but then I'm seeing that not just on the streaming type of video, a lot more real-time, uh, high-depth, three-dimension type of video uh, will be coming in the future. Uh, and on the application side, um, we're definitely seeing a growing trend that a lot, a lot more of the applications are being put on net. Uh, and that's also contributing to a large demand of the capacity uh, for years to come. PacNet's ability to deliver data on demand at high speeds has made it an integral part of the next big thing, cloud computing. Instead of being installed on an individual computer, more and more data and applications are being stored on shared servers to be accessed and used on demand. For the man on the street, keep it simple. Uh, I guess many of you are already uh, a cloud user. Um, the email that's being hosted that you have, that's, that's a cloud application. Uh, online shopping, that's another cloud application. Social network, you're chatting with your friends, uh, you know, it's like video chatting with them, that's another cloud application. So, uh, and some of the more sophisticated users, maybe you're backing up your files uh, through the internet, that's another cloud application right there. The cloud computing is definitely providing a convenience to uh, uh, consumers, to SMB business, uh, to the enterprise business, uh, the ability to get onto applications that in the past only maybe the Fortune 500 can, uh, can afford. Because uh, these days, you know, it's like you don't no longer have to own a piece of software or application before you can run it. You could actually, you know, 
get it from the cloud and you only pay for the portion of time that you need it. PackNet has also recently unveiled plans for a new next generation content delivery network or CDN service. It's aimed at content creators in the media, entertainment and gaming industries and will be in place by the end of 2011. For businesses, this new service means faster, smoother, better delivery of digital content to a growing global online audience. These major initiatives are key to PacNet's future plans to expand in the region and in the world. Where we're going next, we're going to look at where's the internet going and what can we do with our infrastructure on the shore end. So instead of building more and more cables, we'll continue to enhance them, but we're focusing a lot around our data centers uh, and building our cloud services on the shore end. In a region that has just barely started to embrace the internet and all its potential, PacNet is well placed to face the challenges of meeting escalating demand and to harness the opportunities for growth. If you look at the company where we're headed, you'll see us playing much more of an active role in the cloud computing space. You'll see us a very, very active player in the data center area. Uh, and you'll also hear a lot about us in an area that isn't very well known to consumers today, which is the content delivery space. So it's going to be an exciting time for PacNet. The first 10 years were very, very exciting. We're coming up on our 10-year anniversary, and we're very, very excited about the next decade. So there's more to come from PacNet uh, in the next decade. It's sunrise over northwest Australia, and out in the open sea, the Lady Greta, an offshore supply vessel owned and operated by Fastnet Shipping, is preparing to discharge vital cargo in support of an oil rig. Lady Greta, Lady Greta, this is Goodwin. Our coffee. Goodwin, Goodwin. Good morning, sir. This is Lady Greta. Go ahead. Good morning, Lady Greta. The deck pusher would like to backload about 20 lifts. How long before you can be alongside? Over. The oil and gas extracted by these oil rigs is the lifeblood of the world economy. Yeah, we can be under your hook in about 30 minutes' time. Yeah, copy that, Lady Greta. You can start making your way into our port crane and call us at 500 metres over. Roger, will do. But surrounded by sea, the rigs rely on offshore supply vessels like Lady Greta for equipment, supplies, fuel, food and other essentials. Okay, Sam, we just had a call from the rig and they want us to go and do a bit of backload. So, can you give the engineers a call and tell them to get the second engine online? Okay, Ron. I talk to them whenever they're ready, they'll let us know. Okay. Rich. Hello, Jesse. We got a call from the rig for backload some cargo. Let's check everything is okay. Second engine is running. Everything is up, sign is up. Copy? Copy that. I'll call you back in 10 minutes. Roger, thank you. Tech Bridge. Go ahead, Bridge. We've been called into the rig for about two hours worth of backloading. I'll be there in about 20 minutes, so you guys have got time for a cup of coffee. When you hear the thrusters start, come out on deck. Roger, Cup. We'll do that. It's a delicate operation. The ship's crew must work together to get the supply vessel to just the right place below a cargo crane hook to unload her cargo. Great, uh, control room. The engines are ready. I'll pass the controls. Roger, Jesse. Thank you very much. I have the control. Here you come. We got everything is running now. I have control now. Everything ready to go. Okay, Sam. You have the ship. Take her in, mate. Okay, I get it. Finally. The ship moves in. Vital cargo is delivered. It's just one example of what Farstad vessels are doing around the world. Well, Farstad vessels do everything for any offshore company from towing their oil rigs around the world, putting them in position, putting their anchors out, and then providing a full service, taking all the supplies out to the field that they need the drill pipes, the casing, the bulk products, the liquid products, the fuel that they need, and of course even the food that they need. We take everything. Farstead Shipping is a major international supplier of large modern offshore support vessels. The company was founded in 1956 and was one of the first operators in Northwest Europe to focus on offshore service vessels. 
What started out as a small business freighting goods by the Fast Ed family has become a multi-million dollar company over the years. Today, Fast Ed shipping is listed in the Oslo Stock Exchange with a market value of 7 billion Norwegian kroner. It has offices spanning five countries, with the company's head office in Ålesund, Norway. Operation offices have been established in Aberdeen, Melbourne, Perth, Singapore, Makaya and Rio de Janeiro. And its Singapore entity was listed fifth among the fastest growing 50 companies in 2010 by ranking body DP Information Group. Fast Air's strategy is a potent mix of technology and customer service. Our primary objective is to be a leading uh, provider of offshore support vessels internationally. As this industry is increasingly working in deeper waters and using subsea technology. We're seeing greater demand from our customers. Another key goal in there is the long-term association we have with quality customers. We are very fortunate to have um, amazing customers, North Sea, Brazil, Australia and Southeast Asia. Fastet has nearly 2,000 employees worldwide. It has a present fleet of 57 vessels, with eight under construction, and is now among the top five providers of large and modern offshore supply vessels for the global oil industry. The key three things that, uh, that has brought about our success and may drive our success into the future is a very clear focus uh, on where we want to be in the business, um, a very consistent uh, investment and execution of that focus and the third factor would be a real understanding of the importance of the people in the company in delivering that outcome. After the break, in a highly competitive industry, how does FastEd's focus on training and technology enable it to stay ahead of the game? The work undertaken by personnel on FastEd vessels is grueling, physically demanding and requires a high degree of skill and training. It's a bit like flying an aeroplane. Uh, you can be, uh, most pilots will tell you, most of the time it's pretty quiet, then you have sheer panic as you're coming into land. At a time when cost cutting is on everyone's mind, the industry's demands for skill and experience have pushed faster to implement a bold strategy. We uh, would invest probably three times uh, industry average levels in terms of training and development. And this, this involves us in all levels of training in our intake of young staff members uh, into cadet ships, both for ratings, for engineers, for navigating officers, uh, and their ongoing advancement throughout their, their uh, career with fast ad shipping through certificate upgrades. But we do also a lot of work in the training area and in team development. One of the most important areas the company invests in is safety. Safety has come such a long way since I started in the offshore business uh, about 30 years ago. Now we've learnt lessons from other vessels and accidents around the world. Everything is checked and checked again before you actually get alongside an oil platform or a, a rig and uh, start your operations. And the crews now are tr drilled, it's drilled into them that you can stop the work at any time if you are thinking there's any hazard at all. And this is the big thing we have to get across to people that safety is everybody's responsibility. It's not just the captain. It used to be, but not anymore. Everybody on the deck has to look out for each other. But shared responsibility can only happen if staff can recognize danger when they see it. Given the complexity of offshore operations, that requires extensive training. And that's where this comes in. One of the world's largest offshore simulators located in Perth. It's designed and built by the Offshore Simulator Centre, a joint venture from a partnership between Ålesund University College in Norway, Rolls-Royce Marine, Marine Tech and Fastet Shipping. It helps prepare Fastet crew for rigorous real-life operations by putting them through dozens of possible scenarios in a safe environment. 
Fastet's focus on safety at all costs has paid off handsomely. Well, there's um, there's a number of drivers of that. One one's a very big moral driver that we don't want to operate a business where people get harmed. Um, the that aspiration is is uh, fortunately not simply our aspiration. It's the the aspiration of our customers. Fastet also emphasises staff welfare, environmental and quality factors. Its brand as a responsible company has won it many awards as well as dedicated clients. And with our customers, they're looking for reliability, trustworthiness, they're looking for safety to be of prime importance and proficiency. So their reliance on us, we want them to be to totally feel comfortable about FastAd being on top of their operation and not hurting people, not harming the environment. Today, Fastad Shipping is the market leader in Australia and is expanding its presence in Asia rapidly through Singapore. And what does the future hold for the company? We see over the next uh, year or two uh, quite a lot of competition coming into the marketplace through increased supply. Uh, but we, we are bringing some, the, the, all the new ships that we're bringing in are uh, They've got a, we see, a technical competitive edge. We think we can deliver the service in a way that we've got a total competitive edge. Um, it's an exciting future for us. I think the next 20 years in oil and gas are pretty solid. From its beginnings half a century ago, the company's legacy of quality and trust from the North Sea is set to make further waves within the region.